as it Marley said. Nothing. Just a dream, then. Coming was foretold to me? I am. Who and what are you? I am the ghost of Christmas past. What business brings you here? It is for your welfare that I appear. I can think of no greater welfare than a night of uninterrupted sleep. Be careful, Ebenezer Scrooge. I speak of your reclamation. Well, if it's reclamation, then... Let's get on with it. Come. We shall be invisible and silent as the grave. You're so sick at heart that you can't take part. You can't even passively take part. And you've got to put your bodies upon the gears and upon the wheels, upon the levers, upon all the apparatus, and you've got to make it stop. And you've got to indicate to the people who run it, to the people who own it, that unless you're free, the machine will be prevented from working at all. The free speech movement was a student protest unlike any the US had seen before. In response to strict regulations governing political activity on college campuses, thousands of students under the leadership of Mario Savio campaigned for an acknowledgement of their First Amendment rights to free speech and academic liberty. They sought liberation from the shackles of in locus parentis supervision and stewardship and deeply desired to be treated as emancipated adults. At that time, College administrators were regarded as proxy mothers and fathers. At the University of Illinois, undergraduates faced a weeknight curfew of 10.30pm and a weekend curfew of 1am. At the University of Massachusetts, women who broke curfew by five minutes lost privileges for the ensuing Friday night. Ten minutes cost them Saturday night. Fifteen minutes bought them a hearing before the Women's Judiciary Committee. Numerous sit-ins were organised, the most famous at Sproul Hall eventually resulted in a mass arrest of around 800 students. After continued disturbance, the university officials slowly backed down. By January 3rd, 1965, the new chancellor established provisional rules for political activity on the Berkeley campus. These applied to the entire student political spectrum, not just to the liberal elements that drove the free speech movement. The philosophy of the movement can be summarised as the rejection of authority, be it governmental or institutional, in favour of individuality. These aspirations saw many students identify with repressed minorities at home and abroad, and large numbers were consequently involved in both opposition to the Vietnam War and support for civil rights. If I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. Students across the country eagerly joined civil rights leaders in the goal of ending the disenfranchisement and exploitation of blacks, as well as racial segregation. Each movement fueled the other. If there is any one reason for increased student protest, recalled a journalist at the University of Utah, it would probably be the civil rights movement. The movement convinced many of them that non-violent demonstrations could be an effective device on campus. It also served to make them more sensitive of their own civil rights. Whether it be foreign policy, civil rights or free speech, students galvanised behind the concept of liberty and were defiant in the pursuit of egalitarian principles. They were often met with police brutality and violence from individuals loyal to a regressive agenda. 
On April the 4th, 1968, civil rights leader Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated, sending a tremor through America and much of the world. Martin Luther King dedicated his life to love and to justice between fellow human beings. He died in the cause of that effort. In this difficult day, in this difficult time for the United States, it's perhaps well to ask what kind of a nation we are and what direction we want to move in. For those of you who are black, considering the evidence evidently is that there were white people who were responsible, you can be filled with bitterness and with hatred and a desire for revenge. We can move in that direction as a country in greater polarization. Black people amongst blacks and white amongst whites filled with hatred toward one another. We can make an effort, as Martin Luther King did, to understand and to comprehend and replace that violence that stain of bloodshed that is spread across our land with an effort to understand compassion and love. Spirit, show me no more. Conduct me home. I've had enough of your pictures from the past. Leave me. Haunt me no longer. Nightmare. Horrible nightmare. Ebenezer Scrooge. Ebenezer Scrooge. <laughs> You've never seen the likes of me before, eh? It's quite true, I have not. You never walked forth with any of the younger members of my family? No, not that I remember. Nor any of my elder brothers born these later years? I, I, I'm afraid not, no. Do you have many? Brothers, spirit? <laughs> Over 1,800! <laughs> Tremendous family to provide for. Take hold of my robe, Ebenezer Scrooge. is because other people have rights too, not just Walk, walk away. Walk away. It doesn't deserve to be listened to. It doesn't deserve to be listened to. I do not. Be quiet. For all standing Do you understand that? As your position as master, it is your job to create a place of comfort and home for the students that live in Silliman. You have not done that. By sending out that email, that goes against your position as master. Do you understand that? Then no, I stop. don't agree with that. Then, then why the fuck did you accept the position? Because Who I have the a fuck hired you? I have a different vision. You should than step you. down. If that is what you think about being a master, you should step down. It is not about creating an intellectual space. It is not. Do you understand that? It's about creating a home here. 
Student protests at Yale centered on the topic of Halloween, and an email written by lecturer Erica Christakis, who has recently resigned as a result of the controversy. Christakis suggested that students should be free to wear what they choose, and that it was not the place of staff to assume the role of costume dictator throughout the festivities. Protesters accused her of fostering a hostile environment for underrepresented women and minorities. A free choice of costumes could lead to cultural appropriation, the wearing of an outfit that does not belong to the culture of the wearer, and cause great offence. Far from freeing themselves of stewardship, they demand faculty create a home in which they remain children. They insist on protection from ideas and voices that upset them and require a nurturing and therapeutic environment that bears no real relationship to the outside world. Yes, I can. This is the first amendment that protects your right to stand here, protects mine. Just calm down. You're not going to yell at her. Just calm down. You're not going to yell at her. Okay, ma'am. She doesn't want you. They don't want you in front of her. Ma'am, don't yell at me. Ma'am. The first amendment protects your right to be here and mine. Okay, we protect you. We protect our space. There's not a law around that. Forget it. In response to an alleged racist comment on campus, protesters at Missouri University forced the resignation of Dean Tim Wolfe and proceeded to combat the systemic cultural oppression caused by the rare utterance of nasty words. Protesters happily disregarded the individual rights of others and engaged in sometimes violent tactics in the pursuit of their safe space from hurt feelings. Professors such as Melissa Click sympathetic to the cause, were not above a touch of thuggery themselves, even when directed at fellow students. I made it. Can I talk to you? No, you need no. to get out. Well, you need to get out. No, I don't. You need to get out. I actually don't. All right. Hey, who wants to help me get this reporter out of here? I need some muscle over here. The desire to rebel and create a change remains, and yet the priorities of students are almost in direct opposition to those of their forebears. Identity politics is the driving force of the generation, where concepts such as race and gender become more important, not less, and individuals proudly associate these arbitrary identifiers with their sense of personal worth. Protesters at Claymount McKenna College recently shamed and silenced one of their own for attempting to espouse ideas of equality and the importance of judging individuals on intellectual and emotional merits. We should not distinguish people by their race or, or gender or anything. Black people can be racist. Why do you Oh, no. I will make it. I will get this Sorry. I just mean that we have to look people individually. They are prejudiced with power. There are there people, sorry, maybe I don't articulate myself good enough. There are good people and there are people who are not that embracing to other cultures, who may be, who may not live up to standards of a, of proper behaviors. But we have to look through hearts. We have to look into this person, see what she or he really is. Look from the heart, the action, not the race. We. Okay. I want to. I want to bring it back to what Jensi said, and that was going driving back the attention to the person. Free speech and unity are sidelined in the pursuit of authoritarian consensus and division along arbitrary grounds. The Black Student League at Princeton, for example, recently called for the reintroduction of segregation in an effort to create a safe space for Black students. A safe space defined in this case by the absence of whites. Today's protesters may think they are marching in the footsteps of those who came before. In fact, they are undoing much of that generation's enduring accomplishment. They may even wish to transfer aspects of this new world order from the campus into mainstream American society.
What we're calling for is a petition to repeal the First Amendment. Just get rid of it. Blow it up. Get rid of it. Just as a reminder, the First Amendment protects the freedom of speech, the freedom of religion, freedom of assembly, freedom of the press, and oh yeah, freedom of petition. So what we're calling for is to repeal the First Amendment. I, I think this is fantastic. Okay. I absolutely agree. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Love it. Thank you. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll sign it for you guys. Man. All right, I appreciate because it. I, I appreciate what you're trying to do. I think the Constitution should be one big safe space, mm -hmm. right? Her, I mean, uh, hurt people's feelings. Yeah, no. is not, should not be protected no, speech. Course. Yeah, I totally agree with where you're at. Because you shouldn't be exposed to things you don't want to hear. Yeah. You know, that's not right. Um, but like, I think it's really awesome. Thanks, man. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Yeah. How do you show me this? What has it to do with me? Are they not of the human race? Oh, they live. Well, time has come for me to leave you, Ebenezer Scrooge. Leave? Leave me here? Oh, yes. Well, you cannot have take me back to my bed. <laughs> it's too late. It's cold, the place is strange, don't leave me. <laughs> Spirit, come back. I wish to talk. Visit me. And I am in the presence of the ghost of Christmas yet to come, am I not? You're about to show me the shadows of the things that have not happened, but will happen in the time before us. Is that so? Speak to me. Very well. Lead on. The night is waning fast. Time is precious to me. Welcome. Well done, Simon. Next question. What is three times three? Yes? Nine. Wrong. Yes, Penelope. Gender equality. Very good, Penelope. Is this a joke? You think gender equality is a joke? No, but isn't this a maths class? Don't be so racist. I just asked a question. We don't ask questions. Questions are offensive. Yeah! Protest is dead. The authority of political correctness has rendered the process obsolete. Conformity is self-imposed, and dissent from the norm is all but extinct. Education has been reformed to omit any and all microaggressions, 
hurtful words of which there is now a separate dictionary that all staff and students are required to memorise. And each subject, from physics to physical education, is a safe space from originality, ingenuity and free thought. Classes on cultural sensitivity and citizenship are compulsory. A quiz is held once a semester where a fail grade results in immediate expulsion. Classes and dormitories are now segregated by race, gender and sexuality. Association with members of a different group is only permitted in life or death situations. Dress codes are assigned depending on cultural background and the cafeteria is required to serve world cuisine only to be consumed by the nationality from which it derived, of course. The staff have become the wardens of the campus again. They understand that students must be treated like children and protected from opposing points of view. Academic freedom is a thing of the past and exams are graded based on the participants' privilege score and how well their answers respond to the feelings of the question. Facts can even be microaggressions under certain circumstances. You think you're so great with your maths and your science and your facts? What about feelings, huh? Yeah. Feelings are more important than facts. Yeah! It goes without saying that hurting someone else's feelings is now illegal, and all students with Tourette syndrome have been put to death. Some, versed privately in the philosophy of Voltaire, Paine and Orwell, resist and begin protesting in favour of the old order, centred on microaggressions such as life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. This effort is in vain. The culture has come too far and these people are quickly denounced as right-wing fascistic bigots. Why would you hurt someone else's feelings, the majority cry? You must be some kind of sadist. The First Amendment rights that once protected the right to dissent and protest have been repealed. Free speech is now a crime, and criminals must be re-educated. Jack? 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 Shut up! Jack? Jack, I'm innocent, please. Help me. Bastard. Jack, this is all a mistake. Please, Jack. Take that mask off. Oh, how do you think I feel? You shit! Jack! Shut up! This is a professional relationship. Jack, no, you can't. No, Jack, please. Jack, no, don't! Please, Jack, no! this Inspector something informs me that the moment of our parting is at hand I know it but I know not how no no before I draw near to that stone answer me this by the things you have shown me, the shadows of the things that will be. Are they the shadows of the things that may be only? Men's courses will foreshadow certain ends. I, I accept it. But if those courses be departed from, 
The ends must change. Tell me that is so, by what you show me. <laughs> Dear me, I, I am not the man I was. I will not be the man I must have been but for this visitation. Why show me this if I am past all hope? Good spirit. Your nature intercedes for me and pities me. Say that I may change these things by an altered life. I will honor Christmas in my heart and try to keep it all the year. I will live in the past, present, and the future. The spirits of all three shall strive within me. I will not shut out the lessons that they teach. Tell me. <laughs> Tell me that I may sponge away the writing on this stone. Oh, spare me. <laughs> spare me. <laughs> Real challenges face the modern world. Terrorism and the persistence of Islamic fundamentalism, global warming and world poverty, to name a few. How grand would it be if the talent and tenacity of today's youth were diverted from pathetic first world concerns and focused with gusto onto serious problems facing the human race? How grand would it be if the adults of Savio and King's generation took control and better instructed the current generation of students about the dangers of following the path presently defined? I would love to imagine a future where students respect and value liberty, a future where the efforts of the past to create an egalitarian society are not forgotten. A future that is concerned with genuine progress in science, technology and human rights. A future that is optimistic, enlightening and above all, free. <laughs>